You might think you know factorials. 3 factorial is 6, 10 factorial is 3,628,800, and so on. But what happens when we venture into the realm of negative numbers? What on earth could negative 1 factorial even mean? Hold on to your seats because this simple question is going to take us on a wild ride through the fascinating world of advanced mathematics. We're talking integrals, complex numbers, and even a dash of mathematical philosophy. What exactly is a factorial? In math, the factorial of a non-negative integer n is the product of all positive integers less than or equal to n. And these factorials aren't just mathematical curiosities, they have real-world applications. They're used to count permutations, in calculus for Taylor series, and even in quantum physics. But here's the catch. Traditionally, factorials are only defined for non-negative integers. That means 5 factorial, 117 factorial, and 0 factorial makes sense, but what about negative numbers? What about negative 1 factorial? And this is where our journey begins. To understand negative 1 factorial, we'll have to venture beyond traditional mathematics into the world of the gamma function. The gamma function is an old friend of this channel and one of my favorites. It's a mathematical superhero that extends the concept of factorials to a much broader universe. It's defined by this integral formula, and don't worry if it looks intimidating, the key takeaway is that it generalizes the factorial function and lets us find factorials for a whole bunch of values we couldn't before. And with this amazing tool, we should be able to find negative 1 factorial easy, right? Well, when we try to evaluate this integral with calculus techniques, we run into a bit of a snag. The integral doesn't converge to a number, it goes off to infinity. What does that mean? Well, essentially, negative 1 factorial is undefined in the realm of real numbers. But here's an interesting twist. If you type gamma of 0 into Wolfram Alpha, what should be negative 1 factorial, you'll get infinity with a tilde symbol as the output. And it's the same if you input negative 1 factorial itself. And this kind of feels like what we just discovered with this divergent integral. This integral doesn't settle down at a finite number, it goes off to infinity. And so should we just say negative 1 factorial is infinity? Well, if we were forced to define negative 1 factorial this way, I think infinity would be an oversimplification. It's more like infinity with a twist, a special kind of structured infinity that we can understand in a detailed way. And that kind of structure brings us to the world of complex numbers. Now, we hit a little bit of a snag when we are only considering real numbers. But mathematics has a powerful tool called analytic continuation, which allows us to extend functions into the complex plane. And when we extend the gamma function in the complex plane, it gives us some really interesting behavior. Now it's fairly hard to visualize the graph of the gamma function's analytic continuation because it's four-dimensional, but what we can visualize is its absolute value. And here we can clearly spot the poles, the poles where it soars to infinity. In fact, this function has poles at all negative integers including the one representing negative 1 factorial. This is consistent with Wolfram Alpha's output. Now, you might have been wondering about this little tilde symbol over the infinity when you type in gamma of 0 or negative 1 factorial. As always, notation is contextual, but here it essentially means that we have a simple pole, a pole that becomes unbounded in a specific, well-characterized way. Here, this symbol sort of means, pay attention, this isn't just any kind of infinity, it's a special, structured kind of infinity that we can understand in a detailed way. Something about this always sort of bugged me, though. Everything we did relied on this gamma function and its formula. And sure, it seems to work, but no one ever told me where it came from. And then I discovered this. If you want to reveal the mysteries behind this function, click the video on the screen. I promise you'll find this one really interesting. I'll see you in that one. 